It may sound like something out of science fiction, but robotic surgery is a reality in Bloomington. We went along with one patient on his journey before, during, and after robotic surgery and found out why it may be the right choice in certain cases. It's an early morning for Mark Mosier. You know, we talked about radiations and stuff, and I just didn't really think that the radiation treatments were for me. Let's just remove the cancer and be done with it. Let's go. Mark is undergoing prostate surgery. The surgery that they can do now with this um, new robot, whatever it is. The robot is the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System, and it's mainly used by urologists and gynecologists for precision surgeries. But because of where a man's prostate is located, it's also effective for cancer removal procedures like Mark's. Unfortunately, the prostate sits way down in a very difficult place in the pelvis, so traditional laparoscopic work, that is simple keyhole surgery, is quite difficult. You only have two degrees to work in, so suturing and maneuvering is exceptionally difficult. The advantage of docking the robotic machine and then using the laparoscopic techniques with the robotic approach is, number one, you have three dimensions. It actually has two eye holes in the tip of the camera, so you can see in three dimensions, in addition to the extreme magnification that it provides. Typically, we have the camera right in the belly button, and then we have two robotic arms just apart from the patient, just as you would almost yourself. Your eyes are in the middle, your hands are from both sides. So we try to recreate real surgery looking at the patient. Now we put our so-called fourth arm then far down to the left side of the patient. And then we have an assistant that helps operate that is able to do different techniques to clip and to help retract. And our assistant has two ports as well, two small ports on the right side of the patient. With six ports in all, there are no major incisions made on the patient. When you make incisions in individuals, big incisions, and open them up, uh, even if they're not a terribly painful or a large incision, the body reacts to that. It reacts with inflammatory markers. It reacts with uh, different ways of letting the body react to stress. The less you do of those larger cuts, there really is less trauma to the patient, significantly less. Bring it on in. During surgery, Dr. Lentz sits slightly away from the operating table, watching feeds from each of the six cameras, magnified in 3D. And more importantly, it has six degrees of freedom. Every direction that I move my wrist is translated into the machine. So I can get into very tight spaces at extreme magnification and maneuver very tiny sutures and devices to sew, to, uh, to get into spaces that you can't get under any other circumstance. Now, I find myself essentially operating upside down and backwards, but that's easy with a robot. You could never do that with any other technique. But Lance doesn't work alone, employing an assistant surgeon who stands over the patient. Uh, they act as sort of the bedside surgeon, if you will. They're able to maneuver the parts from the machine. If I need to switch out from, say, scissors to some sort of grasping device, they're able to move the arms of the robot out and switch. They're able to clean the camera if, heaven forbid, it gets dirty. And more importantly, they're able to really assist in holding things back, clipping where necessary, and providing different instrumentation that simply we don't have yet for the robot. It's a very, very critical part. There we go. That's, that's getting it now. Dr. Lentz removes the prostate and then starts rebuilding. Unique to the prostate operation, it's, we're not simply getting it out for cancer and it's done. There's a whole reconstructive process as well. We have to reattach the bladder to the urine channel to allow the gentleman to urinate normally without leaking and also make an attempt to spare the nerves so that they can maintain erections after the operation as well. A lot of people view robotics as if we're hooking up a machine and, and the surgeon goes and sits down and has a coffee. That's not reality. It, it is what we refer to as a slave master technology. It is just a, a technique. The entire machine, every aspect of it is controlled by the surgeon. It just enables us to refine the technique that much more. Hey, Mark. Dr. Lance. 
How you doing, man? All right, yourself? I'm good. Everybody During his first follow-up visit, Dr. Lentz has good news for Mark. They do some testing of the prostate, and they're very confident, you know, that the cancer did not spread to any other parts of my body. So it looks like we got it all, and that was the primary goal. So uh, things couldn't have went any better. And John Warnicke joins me now from Intuitive Surgical. Thank you so much for being here. We You're appreciate welcome. it. Thank you for having me. You actually provide the Da Vinci surgical system to hospitals like Bloomington Hospital, right? We do, yes. Uh, well, we saw in that previous story the robotic instruments. They were magnified to such a degree. But in reality, these instruments are just tiny. You brought some with us, right? I did. I brought one example. There are over 58 different instruments that are used in robotic surgery. And each tip is about a millimeter in size. Wow. And if you can see, one of the unique features of these instruments is they articulate like the human wrist. That's amazing. Now, which instrument is this that we're looking at right here? This is actually used to manage uh, needles. It's called a large needle driver, mm -hmm. and a surgeon would use this to tie sutures inside the patient. So the benefit is the patient gets the same dexterity and range of motion of a surgeon's hands through a small incision. Okay, you also brought with you the laparoscopic instrument as well to kind of show us the difference. What is the difference? I did, I did. One of the big things is from a laparoscopic surgery is one is the surgeon can only manage two of these instruments at a time. The other is that um, they move kind of opposite directions of the surgeon's hand and they do not articulate at the tip. So the benefit that robotic surgery offers to patients as well as surgeons is that extra dexterity and range of motion of the human hand. And Dr. Lentz was telling us about that, that actually, I mean, any movement that he can do with his wrist, the actual surgical system does it for him, right? Exactly. The robot is just completely assistant in the OR room with the surgeon, and the surgeon can manipulate the instrument um, whatever way best suits the situation and can do it exactly as he would his human hand. We talked about the fact that right now at Bloomington Hospital it's used for gynecologic and urolo urologic uh, surgeries. What else can the Da Vinci system be used for? Sure, worldwide we have 1,200 systems in place and uh, hundreds of thousands of procedures including specialties uh, such as cardiac, urology, gynecology, pediatrics, and general laparoscopic surgery. That's very interesting. What's the next incarnation of the Da Vinci system? Well, we're currently right now on our fourth generation robotic platform, and um, just like any technology continues to evolve, one of the things we're probably most excited about at this time is the fact that uh, the uh, newest introduction is a dual surgeon console system, and that allows um, very experienced surgeons to train new residents in um, medical school on how to operate the uh, robot, and they can both simultaneously uh, perform the surgery in real time together. So that's currently where we're at, and, and the future uh, will continue to evolve. Exactly. And to you, what has been the, the greatest response, I guess, from the system and both the surgeons that are using it and also the patients? Well, without question, it's, it's the patient and clinical value that is brought. Um, you know, largely before this was used in urology, 95% of the patients were um, receiving their surgery through a large open incision. The introduction of uh, the Da Vinci gave the surgeons the extra tool they needed to now perform that same type of surgery in a minimally invasive fashion. So the fact that patients can get out of the hospital sooner, back to normal functions quicker, um, just really extends the continuum of patient care throughout not just the surgery, but then post-operation as well. Well, we definitely saw that with Mark and Dr. Lentz. And thank you so much, John, for coming on the show. We really You're do welcome. appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thanks for having appreciate me. appreciate it. And in the interest of full disclosure, the Da Vinci system is housed in Bloomington Hospital, which is a production supporter for the weekly special. Now, let's go over to Joe.